God's Way Meeting – All presentations, seminars or discussions within formal or informal meetings arranged by directors or members of God's Way Limited. The title of this meeting is Heartfelt Passion for God's Way, during which the directors of God's Way Limited asked Jesus to be a guest speaker at the 2018 Annual General Meeting where he discusses with his fellow members the importance of having a heartfelt passion for God's way and to enjoy constant change and soul growth in order for God's Way Limited to grow and thrive. The meeting was recorded on the 14th of February 2018 at 11.30 a.m. in Mount Coulomb, Queensland, Australia. The subject of my talk, the directors don't even know at this point, so <laughs> they've just let, let me have my way. So I'm going to have my way with you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in um, in the, um, an, the annual report that Mary wrote, you will see that there was a section, as she mentioned, about the vision of the organisation. And if you had to summarise the vision of the organisation, you can see that there are, she's broken, and, and we've done this together, broken some of the factors of that vision. If you look at, have all of you got a copy of your AGM, of your annual report with you? No? Uh, there's an extra copy out the back if someone needs a copy. Vision Yeah, so we're talking page three, vision is the thing I'd like you to have a look at. When an organisation writes a report that is to do and talks about a vision, you know, most of the time that's the organisation's vision, the reason, if you like, why the organisation has been incorporated in the first place. And there is a bit of a difference here between God's way as an organisation and a normal organisation because this vision that has been stated as the vision of the organisation needs to also be the vision of the, its members. Yeah. Now, how, it's one thing to say, you know, this is the vision of an organisation. All that requires is, say, a director writing a report and saying this is the vision of the organisation. <laughs> but the organisation is an entity without humanity unless you involve the people. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. And so unless the vision is in the hearts of the people who are involved in the organisation. The vision is really just a, a, a piece of some words on a piece of paper that mean not much at all, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For this vision to actually have practical application, this vision is going to have to be in your heart. Mm -hmm. And the real question becomes, is the vision in my heart, mm -hmm. doesn't it? If the vision is not in my heart, then am I going to engage this vision? Obviously not. And I, am I going to do it with passion? I'm obviously not going to do that. So unless this vision is in my heart, um, this organisation of which, in which I'm involved is probably not going to work too well or function too well. And in, in some regards, it's also in a way, almost hypocritical, isn't it? See, in the world, you're allowed to be a member of an organisation when you don't agree with its vision. Because membership, by definition, is just pay your dues and you're a member. Right? But membership of God's way, under the terms of its constitution, requires the heart of the individual to be involved in its vision. So it's actually a requirement of your membership to actually have the vision in your heart. And so, to my mind, having the vision in your heart is probably the most important thing you can do for God's way. Because if this vision's in your heart, 
you are going to be a prime mover for that vision, aren't you, in your day-to-day life. That's what you will do. You will be a person motivated to, to actually take on this vision and live your life in complete harmony with this vision. Now, what did you notice in this vision section when you read the vision section? You noticed there was fundamental facts. Wasn't, wasn't there? Now, all of you have heard the fundamental facts many times before, right? The fundamental fact, firstly, of love. So the reason why I'm in this organisation is so that I have, I'm involved in a vehicle, because the organisation is just a vehicle, right? It's a vehicle of the members. You could say it's the member's bus. <laughs> you get it? So everybody, all the members, you know, at this stage, uh, the eight, and, and hopefully in, in this year there'll be a bit few more, all the members pile in our little minibus now at the moment. <laughs> is it? That's what it is, because we'd all fit in a minibus. So all the members pile in the minibus, and, uh, and imagine, um, you know, they're taking turns driving. And one member, she hasn't got the vision in her heart, so what does she do when she drives? She's over on this diversion over here in that direction because the vision, which is in this direction, she's not interested in. She's interested in this vision, so she's uh, driving this way. And when everybody wakes up in the back, (laughs) they're at a place where they didn't expect. Right? And then oh, the next person goes, oh, you did the wrong vision, you know, you had to, it's, a, it's the wrong way to go. And everybody, you know, the majority of those members agree, oh, let's move it, let's, let's make our vision in this direction. So they go in this direction for a while. And then they realise uh, that's not what everybody really wants either. And that, can you see that if every member who is in the bus has a different vision, sooner or later you're all going to end up in completely different locations And what's going to happen to the bus? Well, you can't use a bus anymore, can you? Because a bus takes a group of people to one destination and you want to all go to different destinations. So you'll take some other form of transport, won't you? And the bus will just be left there. And what will it do? It'll just gather moss, gather rust, right? It'll be neglected. If each of you decide that your way is how you expect God's way to be, then we're going to end up with an empty bus and a lot of people just living their own lives their own way as they have always lived them. For, for God's way to work, each member needs to passionately share its vision. And each member, therefore, needs to passionately share the fundamental facts. They they need to be inside of our heart, don't they? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the fundamental facts, the very first one, one of love, isn't it? If, unless you're here because you want to love others and you want to demonstrate the love of others and you want to love yourself and you want to actually live in harmony with love of self, if you're not willing to live in harmony with love of self and you're not willing to live in harmony with love of others, you don't share the vision of God's way. So whenever you get resistive to loving others, you know, where you don't want to forgive or you know, you don't want to help others and you feel like, oh, you just want others to give to you. You just want others to meet your addictions or whatever. You're you're not living in harmony with vision anymore. Or let's say, and for many of you, this is more of a problem. Let's say you refuse to love yourself. You refuse to take the necessary actions that demonstrate love of self. You let other people force you into doing things you don't want to do. You let other people motivate your life or move your life in directions you don't want to take. You allow them to manipulate you or control you or, or to have power over you. That's not love of self. So that's not in harmony with the vision either. Can you see that? To be in harmony with the vision, we've, we've got to 
want to love God's way. That's the whole point of naming the organisation God's Way Limited, right? God's Way. And it's an appropriate name, really, God's Way Limited. <laughs> because all of us at the moment are actually God's Way Limited. You know, we're not God's Way full on or something like that. But the point of the organisation is really that we become, like, we become personal examples of God's Way. If, if each of us is a personal example of God's way, not only will we be passionate fulfilling our role within the organisation, whatever that role might be, whether it's cleaning the dunnies or being a director or anywhere in between. And by the way, a lot of the directors clean the dunnies. And we will, we will do every task with passion, won't we? Yep. Because we understand this is a part of my expression of love for the world to support an organisation that has the ability to share with the world God's truth in a practical way. So, so if you examine the, the first fundamental fact, love, we need to love ourselves and we need to love others. Now, most organisations in the world are governed around a 40 hour plus work week and the more dedicated you are, the longer you work. So if you're really, really dedicated, you work 80 hours and you do 40 of those hours for free. You know, that's normally how many organisations work, right? But that's not love of self. So actually our organisation through its constitution prevents you from working 80 hours a week. Because it wouldn't be loving to yourself to do that. Of course, a lot of the work we do is not really work because <laughs> we love it, right? <laughs> so it's really enjoyable. So, you know, you'd have to measure the fact that some of it's play, really, rather than work. <laughs> but the point is that if we are finding our work a struggle for God's way, then we're not really a living example of that very first fundamental fact. So we're actually harming God's way. We're not helping it. Do you see? And so when, it look, when we're looking at this issue of love, one of the things we would like to encourage all of you to do is to give yourselves time to work through your emotional injuries. That is an act of love of self. Give yourself time to work through your relationship. If you're in a relationship, take the time to do that. That's love of self. It's also love of the other person who you're attempting to have a relationship with. Don't sacrifice those things for the sake of an organisation whose fundamental constitution says you shouldn't sacrifice <laughs> those things for it. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. What's our next one, our next fundamental fact? Truth. Truth. So you can see within the organisation and all of those who have been members for the last year or a year and a half, and some of you have been less, but some have been more, you know that we're pretty straight out honest about everything, aren't we? If there's a, if there's a problem here, it's said straight away. If there's, a, you know, if there's an issue that needs to be raised, it's talked about openly. There's no, there's no secrets, there's no hidden agendas, there's no desire for facade. Whenever you have a facade, it's usually, you know, exposed, <laughs> right? You can see the organisation needs to do that, right? Because that is a fundamental fact that the organisation is based upon. The question now becomes, okay, two things. Am I truthful with myself? Am I honest with myself? You can't progress unless you are honest with yourself. So when you're angry, you're angry. Be honest about it. If you're sad, you're sad and be honest about that, you know. Let yourself be honest about yourself in the organisation as well as privately. Live your life the way that the organisation's constitution is stating we should all live our life. Allow ourselves to live our life this way. We also need to be honest with everyone else. There's times when you're going to be upset. There's times when you're going to feel like you're being pulled down or belittled or 
whatever else might have happened, you need to be honest about it. Right? That's God's way. Live God's way. Now, so far we've covered two of our fundamental facts. What's the third one? Humility. Humility. So humility requires two things for me, really of me. It requires me firstly to be humble enough to see where I'm at and to feel where I'm at. It's not just seeing where I'm at, but feeling where I'm at. So letting yourself feel what you feel. You're allowed to feel what you feel. If you feel sad, you're allowed to feel sad. When you're working with us and you feel sad, you're allowed to feel sad. You're allowed to cry. No one's going to punish you for crying, right? If you feel happy, you're allowed to be happy, even if the next person next to you is crying. You're allowed to be happy. So you're allowed to be happy. You're allowed to demonstrate that happiness. So the first thing about you know, humility is you, you're, you're wearing your feelings on your sleeve. And I would encourage all of you to, to do that more. Wear your feelings on your sleeve. Let people know what you feel. That any feeling can be resolved and felt. Let people know what you feel and feel it. But don't blame them for your feelings. They're your feelings. Let yourself feel them. The second thing is what you do with others in controlling their feelings. If a person's having a feeling and you're controlling their feeling, you make it harder for them to feel their feeling. If you belittle their feeling, if you make fun of their feeling, if you diminish their feeling, if you misrepresent their feeling, or you uh, say their feeling is not that important or, or, or anything like that, or that your feeling is more important, which is often, a, we're often we enter a competition with feelings. Really, we're not allowing humility in that person. We're actually shutting down their humility. Right. Now, to live in harmony with the Constitution, we don't do that. We, we live in harmony with it, the Constitution. We let people be what they feel and we are what we feel. All right. Now, we're all works in progress and it's going to be a bit messy like this, isn't it? We're all works in progress, but that's how it be. What's the last section of the fundamental right? Faith. faith. So what does faith really mean? Doesn't it, doesn't it mean to have a firm conviction in your heart that something in the future is possible if I engage a certain course of action. So to, to stay with this organisation, you're going to need to have some faith that everyone in the organisation is working towards a common goal, that everyone in the organisation wants to do things God's way, that everyone in the organisation doesn't want to hurt you and they don't want to harm you and they don't want to punish you, you're going to have to have some faith that you can, we can all work together. You're going to have faith that we have a common goal and faith that we can achieve it and faith that God's laws um, support that. And without that faith, there's going to be no desire. There'll be no desire to carry forward the principles of the organisation into your day-to-day -day life or the organisation itself will not be able to carry forward its goals. Now, if you look at those four fundamental facts, we've heard them all before, like love, truth, humility, faith. We look at those four fundamental facts, we can see the organisation is basically saying, our vision is to live these. These are the fundamental facts of the universe. This is how we grow. This is how we learn new things. This is how we obtain new scientific evidence for everything around us. This is what we do. This is how we do it. If you live that life inside of your own life, can you see that living it in the organisation is going to be pretty easy? But can you also see that if you're opposed to a lot of those things in your private life, when it comes to like working together with a team who isn't opposed to those things, it's going to be pretty hard. And this is why we have a volunteer selection program, right? Because we've got to find at least the people who are going to at least be, have some kind of acceptance of these fundamental facts in a practical way in their day-to-day -day life. 
That's why we've got the program. Then you can see in the uh, report that our managing director wrote, there's a section in there about principles, the fundamental principles involved. Right? But all of those principles that are listed there are really expressions of a person who lives in harmony with the fundamental facts anyway, aren't they? Right? You could almost say those principles are, right, while they're excellent principles and they're all written down for us so that we can be aware of them, you can almost say that if I lived in harmony with the fundamental facts, those principles possibly wouldn't be necessary for, to be stated even. And so what I'm getting at in the conversation with you that I wanted to have is, that, is this. In order for the organisation to be a living example of an organisation that lives in harmony with God's laws and principles and lives in harmony with, you know, God's truth or put it more correctly, lives in harmony with God's way, in order for the organisation to bear its own name, God's way, it's going to require that its members live God's way. And live God's way no matter what, what happens. And initially with an organisation like this, there might be opposers, There'll be people making fun of us, potentially, but we'll still keep living God's way. And even when you become very, very successful and famous for living God's way, and uh, you won't, you know, get all arrogant and haughty and proud about that, but you'll keep living God's way. <laughs> Whether you're infamous or famous, you'll keep living the same way the way that God designed. Now, unless you believe that is the way in your heart to live, then it's really going to be exposed, isn't it, at some point in the organisation. So what I would like to encourage all of you to do is to consider that, you know, if we chose to do no programs whatsoever, and we chose to do no documentation whatsoever, and we chose to do no production of any kind in God's way whatsoever. And we chose to not share anything that we've ever done with anybody in the world whatsoever. But each of us were personally growing in God's way. Our organisation would still be successful. So the work you do in God's way is not what makes God's way successful. The work you do in God's way can share what is done with the world, which will help people in the world, but it's not what makes the organisation successful. What makes the organisation successful is that each member of the organisation practices God's way in their life. That's what makes it successful. If you do that, you won't be able to sit still anyway, will you? You won't be able to produce nothing because that's not God's way. <laughs> right? Things will get done. And more importantly, people will see the benefit of living a life in harmony with God's truth. That's what they'll see. And that's what I feel we need to put our focus on. So you'll notice when Mary talked about her, the future goals in her section from the managing director, she talked about the future goals of the organisation, you know. The very first thing she mentioned was an improvement in the condition of the individuals, members of God's way. All right? That's our primary focus, actually. And, and if that can happen, then a lot of the other things will naturally happen. 
they'll be, it's like a plant growing. If you water it and you give it the right food and you plant it in the right soil, it's going to grow. It's God's way. It grows. If you do the same with yourself, water yourself, feed yourself, plant yourself properly in God's way, you'll grow. And because you're growing and you're a member of this organisation, the organisation will grow. But if you decide that you're going to busy yourself doing all these things for God's way, <clears throat> spending your 80 hours a week performing for God's way, <laughs> you know, but you don't grow in God's way, what's going to happen? Probably not much, right? Probably not much. Now, in the world, people can grow organisations really easily. They just put monumental amounts of effort into doing it. And they put monumental amounts of money into doing it and they, you know, they spend a huge amount of time doing it. That's what they do. But what I'm really suggesting to you is no, what I'd like to see is that you, you spend some time doing some of those things because you like doing it and it's part of your desires and passions, but you spend your time developing your self, your condition. Hmm. And I feel if you do that, in a year's time, we'll have eight, maybe 11, 12 members so we need a bigger bus. <laughs> All going in the same direction. same direction. So it doesn't matter which one drives. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in the process of going all in the same direction, we're also going to accomplish the same goals. And because there's now 12 of us doing it, it's 12 times one doing it. 12 times what one could do is going to be accomplished. Right? And, if, and that in itself, the, the example that you demonstrate, your growth, will pull people to you to, and therefore also to the organisation in which you are involved. And so the organisation then has the potential to grow and you will be able to help and assist those people who come to grow. And because we're all driving in the right direction, or we're all on the bus, the bus is cohesive, it stays together, it operates still. And then in two years' time, there might be 15 members or 20 members maybe. You don't know. In fact, it's going to, to a large degree, depend on how fast we grow in the next year, isn't it? As individuals, as to how many members there'll be. Some of you who are having struggles with your partners and stuff, who knows? If you do God's way, two years' time, things might be different there. You don't know. And we might, and we might, see, we might see all of them here too. You don't know. Right? That would be great, right? And... Friends that you might know will understand and see the changes you've made. They'll also be interested as a result of the changes you make and so forth and so forth. And that will just continually grow until like five years' time. Like we might need a bigger bus, like a 44 bus, you know, one that will carry like a proper bus. And then in two years' time after that, we might need a double-decker bus. And then, and then in like three years' time after that, we might need five double-decker buses in three different countries. And, and in ten years' time after that, we might need a thousand double-decker buses in every country. You don't know. But it does depend a lot on whether we as members live the Constitution or just talk about the Constitution. Doesn't it? That's really what it depends upon. Yeah. So I'd like to encourage you guys to make any changes necessary to live the Constitution and 
and have some faith in God that everything's going to work out if you do. Everything's going to work forward if you do do that. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You can see how it relates, can't you, to the future of the organisation. Without the individuals in the organisation growing, and here I'm not saying growing in number, I'm saying growing in condition. Without the individuals in the organisation growing in condition, the organisation itself can't really grow. So if, I, if we draw a little diagram, if we say at the moment our organisation, while it's got great ideals, it's got great... Um, <clears throat> underlying governing principles, which is what the Constitution actually is. The condition of each of us mean that it's not far above the Earth's current condition. So even though the organisation should really be, in terms of its condition because of its ideals, up here, right? really because of our condition, it's down here in its condition. Does that make sense? So while the ideals itself are great ideals, unless every one of us is living those ideals, the condition of the organisation is only ever going to be the sum total collective condition of us as its members. But as each one of these members grow, so let's say of the eight members, four of those members grow, right, in the course of a year, now the organisation has a new condition. That's how it gets its new condition. It doesn't get its new condition from what it does. It gets its new condition from the sum total of the condition of the people in the organisation. That's how it gets its new condition. Does that make sense? So we've got to stop saying that it's going to get it from what we do and we've got to start seeing that it gets it from conditional changes of the members within the organisation. That's what it's going to get it from. Now you can see if the other four members make now another growth in the next year because it took a bit of time for them to make those growths and growth takes time. You can't be expected to make one change that's significant that you've been resisting for 30 years of your life all of a sudden. It's not like that but it's... It's going to be a growth. So now the condition of God's way will be here. Now, the end goal of the condition of God's way is what the Constitution states is it should be its condition. That's the end goal. But the only way it's going to get to that goal is by making these quantifiable steps, which are changes of the condition of the individual members. Make sense? That's how it does it. So it's not about what you're doing. It's about changing condition, helping yourself to grow in love, grow in truth, grow in humility, grow in faith over the coming year. Now, the organisation is going to this year spend time doing a lot of things that will support you doing that, right? Support you in the growth of your condition. But you can see the only way the organisation actually grows from God's perspective is not by growing in number and not by growing by the amount of material it shares, not by growing by the amount of wonderful programs it has and not by growing in terms of like, you know, amount of work it does. But it can only grow by the individual condition of the members of the organisation changing. That's how it grows from God's perspective. Now, God's got that as a natural process. And as long as we, in God's way, and the leaders of God's way, as long as we all engage that same process, there is going to be a growth in your condition in the next year. And some of you are going to be freaked out about it because it would be scary. And some of you will think, oh, that's a wonderful year for me because there's some good things happening for a change <laughs> compared to the previous one. 
but there's going to be at least growth in, and hopefully in every aspect of your life where you translate what we're talking about in God's way to your personal life and you do it in your personal life. Make sense? Then we have a growing organisation from God's perspective. How many members we have is not the material thing. It's the condition of the members. Now you can see we've already got some quite stringent qualification process. Like, I'm sure there's many people who went through the volunteer selection program who expected to come out at the end of it quite easily, thinking it would be a simple program, only to find that it was a little bit harder to get through the program than they thought. Well, that's because the constitution of God's way specifies the base condition of the member. Does that make sense? What is an acceptable condition for the member to be in? And one of the, you can see that the, one of the biggest things there is the humility factor. It doesn't matter so much what injuries you have, it matters whether you're willing to deal with them or not. That's the thing that we're looking at. So as the condition of the members grow, this, the constitution, which is in this condition, now can be demonstrably exampled to the world because the condition of the members are, is approaching the condition of the constitution. You can see that, right? If the condition of the members never approaches the condition of the constitution, then the constitution and the organisation itself are in disharmony with each other. And that's why it's so important that each member works on their condition. And so my final comment is this. You've got to learn to enjoy change of your condition. What I notice is that most of us don't yet enjoy the change of our condition. So, you know, when we're having a cry, we panic. Why are you panicking? This is good, it's a change in your condition. You, you, it's a good thing. You don't have to panic about it. Right? If you are panicking about it, let go of the reasons why you're panicking about it because it's good for you, it's, a change, it's helping you change your condition. We've got to get to the stage where we want to change, we like change, and we enjoy the process of change. Now you can see that means that it's highly likely that any fears we have are going to have to be addressed, right? Fears of change that we have are going to have to be addressed. But if, if we can get to the stage where we're enjoying the change, can you see what that's going to be like as an organisation? Every year, isn't it going to be fascinating? Every year the organisation is going to be completely different than the last year. It's like you'll be living in a new organisation every year. Like, you won't have to go and say, oh, I'm not happy with this organisation, it's just not changing. It's real boring now. It won't be boring. Your life won't be boring because you'll be constantly having to make adjustments and changes in your life. And that might include where you're living, how you're living, where, what's going on, whether you're traveling or not, and all, all, all the deeper things. As we've said in some of the answer to some of your questions about international interest and so forth, some of you might spend you know, 10 years of your life in the, in the next 20 overseas. You don't know. You don't know what might happen if your condition changes and the organisation's condition changes. But those potentials are only available if personal conditions change, personal conditions of the members. Now, what I've noticed in the last year is many of you have made some changes. You've been confronted 
by the process in the organization to make changes. Many in the volunteer program during the 12 weeks of the volunteer program changed. Right. This is a good thing. The key is to enjoy the change. <laughs> Many of us make changes, but we don't enjoy it. <laughs> you know, we, we've been told over and over again, haven't we, that by stretching ourselves is how we change, right? But it's like many of us get, get a little stretch and we go, oh, this is pretty uncomfortable, I don't like this, and we stop this is not going to help the organisation. Right? We want to just let that stretch happen, let it happen. Surrender to the process of growth that God's got. Automatically involved in all of God's laws is the process of growth. You plant a seed, you water it and you feed it, it grows. Right? And the seed doesn't know how it grows. It just grows. And if you just let water it, feed it, and just let yourself grow rather than trying to control your growth. If you just let it happen, surrender to the process of growth that God's got as a part of God's laws, and not only surrender to it, but eventually come to enjoy the fact that every year you're different than the last one, then our organisation is going to be a very good organisation to start, stick with for in the long term, isn't it? Imagine every single person in the organisation being like that. You'll have people knocking down our doors to get in, right? To be involved. Wouldn't you? Once they felt that. Yeah. So... The, the powerful thing is going to be for our future is to allow ourselves to make a transition from resistance to growth into enjoyment of growth. You remember when you were a child, you looked forward to the next year. Do you remember that? Like, you know, maybe your dad or your mum said, oh, you can't do that now, you have to be eight when you do that. So what was happening then? Want you wanted to be eight even when you were six, right? And you were waiting for eight and you're waiting for eight, waiting for eight. When you're eight, there's a huge celebration, you're eight, because now you can do that particular thing you were restricted from doing when you're six. It's exactly the same with the way God's programmed your growth from, from a soul perspective. It's just that you don't believe it anymore. You don't believe that it's good anymore. Things happen to you that cause you to not believe it's good anymore. And what, I, what I'd like to recommend to you is to work on whatever those things are that cause you to not believe that growth is good for you and allow yourself to see that growth is a great thing that you can be happy about. Because if you're happy about growth, you're also going to rejoice in the organisation's growth. Makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. So when the organisation changes and it's saying, oh, huh, Bob, do you want to go overseas for two years? You go, love to. Love to, that'd be great. You know, oh, I'm going to do that. You know, instead of going, oh, but overseas, what country? What country? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not, not Africa. <laughs> no, or, you know, or not the USA or whatever it is that you feel stressed about going to. <laughs> You know, you can see that yeah, if you resist the growth, then those opportunities can't be offered to you. They have to be offered to somebody else. Allow the growth to happen, you know. If you allow the growth to happen and you enjoy the growth in your own life, you're going to enjoy the growth that, you know, that happens in God's way. You know, a lot of the directors have said this year, yeah, I come confused to each fortnight because each fortnight's like we're making another different decision. <laughs> but that, that's how it's going to be, isn't it? Of course, if it's not like that, then there's a problem, isn't there? Because that's what growth is. 
growth is every fortnight and you're making different decisions, new decisions, bigger scope, a bigger vision and so forth. So what I wanted to do was encourage each member to firstly understand that the organisation from God's perspective can't grow to the point where it matches its constitution unless the individuals within the organisation grow so that their condition matches the constitution. And the organisation is going to go through a process of change where we're in a condition now, which is the sum total of our conditions as members. And as each of us shift in new directions, there will be a shift in the organisation's growth to the point where we'll eventually make these all of the steps necessary to get us to this wonderful condition that's stated inside of the constitution itself of being able to share examples of God's love with the world and show people how receiving God's love has an effect on humanity. So it'd be great if next year we're there, right? Rather than there, right? Or even rather than there. Wouldn't it? But that is only going to happen is if each one of us has also made the same kind of transition. And what I like to see is that many of you are doing that. You know, you are challenging your life. You are doing that and just like to encourage you to do that. Keep doing that. But also encourage you to remove you from yourself any resistance you have to enjoying the process of growth. Because growth is a good thing. You ask a parent when they have a baby whether growth is a good thing. If a baby stays a baby and they're 10 years old and they're still like little tiny thing like that, most parents would be what? <laughs> really, really worried, right? <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be devastated, wouldn't you, as a parent? What's going on? Why isn't this child growing? Why is it that we're not devastated when our condition is exactly the same as 10 years ago? It's because we don't have the same love for ourselves as we have for the child. That's why. If we had the same love of ourselves as we had for the child, we would see that no growth in 10 years is not a good thing, right? And that's why I raised with you earlier that love of self issue. So that's what I want to encourage all of you guys to do. I think our organisation is going to be a lot of fun. I know I have a lot of fun with it, even though I work pretty hard with it. I have a lot of fun with it. You know, as Mary knows, sometimes I'm just uh, sketching up things and another one out and sketching up things and another one out. These are all just ideas. And Mary says, but well, what's happening with those ideas? You might not do any of them. So <laughs> our ideas, are, oh, I'm using them to grow. I'm using them to put, you know, come up with new ideas and new concepts. And at some point there will be a merging of those concepts into a into a final product that we will probably engage, right? And that's what it's going to be like for each of you. you. You're going to feel some enthusiasm for what's possible. And instead of it being like pulling teeth to get a document out of you, it's like... <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, for many of it, it's going to be like, document, that document, that was done six months ago. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I've done 25 documents since then. And, and we'll get to the stage where we'll need document readers, right, who just read your documents to make sure, <laughs> make sure everything's fine because none of us have got the time to read everything we produce, right? Because we're keen on growth and we're keen on change and we're keen on seeing the world share the information you know yeah. and that you live because you see the benefits of it. So I feel if we do that with God's way, it's going to be pretty good. 
not only that, it's going to, it's going to be very enjoyable working with each of the people who do that. You know, instead of there being resistances like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to do that. You know, there's like, yeah, whatever, let's go ahead and do these and things and that thing, and whatever. You know, it's going to be enjoyable to work with each other. And when people, other people come along, they're going to enjoy our company. Not just our personal company. I mean, our company. They're going to enjoy God's Way Limited, <laughs> our company. And even though God's Way is still limited, <laughs> because we have not... We have not reached the, you know, the full, uh, you could say, the full expression of the Constitution because of our condition. It's growing towards it, and the more it grows towards it, the more people it's going to attract. So slow growth is fine. Not producing anything is fine, although highly unlikely but not growing personally, that's not fine. We need to have the same attitude as a parent would have to a child who's not growing. We need to go, wow, this is a problem. If I don't grow, there's a problem. I need to grow. And, so, and sometime in your future, in your growth, you'll get to the point where not growing is, you feel it, you do. You feel it as a major problem and you can't bear it anymore. You, you decide that you can't do it. It's not possible to do anymore. And that's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Hmm. So are there any questions about what I've discussed with you? I think it's all pretty plain. So while we could have a chat about all the different programs we've got going and all the different fun things we're doing and so forth, I thought it was better to have a chat with you about growth, about change, about accepting the fundamental facts, the fundamental principles, fundamental facts of the vision into your heart and actually embracing that in your day-to-day -day life and it, it is hard sometimes because the people around you won't like it sometimes. Sometimes it is hard because of that. But once they start seeing you enjoying your life and feeling satisfied with your life, a lot of times their feelings will change. 